right, in this video we're looking at how to use the graphing calculator to conduct the hypothesis test that's designed to compare two population proportions. So let's read the problem and see what it's asking us to do. It says in 2007 researchers looked at 15,024 deaths of U.S. citizens overseas. In this study it was found that 13% of those deaths were injury related. In the same year, 121,599 deaths in the U.S. mainland were due to injuries out of a total of 2,423,995 deaths. At the 2.5% 2 .2 significance level, it tests the claim that the proportion of deaths of U.S. citizens living in the mainland due to injury is less than the proportion of injury-related deaths of U.S. citizens abroad. Okay, so it's definitely a hypothesis test, test the claim, and it's definitely about two proportions. So let's go ahead and run the test. So we're going to press the stat key on our calculator, going to arrow over to where it says tests, and then we're going to go down to where we look for a two-proportion z-test. So let's go down until we see a two-proportion z-test. That looks like option six in my calculator, so I'm going to hit enter now that that's highlighted. And it gives us a list here. It gives us x1, n1, x2, n2. So that's our data it wants us to enter. Now, if you look at what we have in this problem, we have this many deaths of U.S. citizens overseas, and it's found that 13% of those deaths were injury-related. So this is the total number of deaths. That's the N for the overseas group. So I'm going to come down here and type for the N for the overseas group and write it as um, 15,024. So I type that in for N. Now the X is a little bit tricky. P hat, the sample percentage, is basically defined as x over n. So p hat is x over n. That means if you want to determine what your uh, x is, you have to do p hat times n. So this p hat times that will give us the x value. So the p hat here is 0.13. So anytime you're given your p hat as a decimal instead of given the x value, you're actually going to take that decimal answer and multiply by n, which will tell you exactly how many deaths were due to injury. Since 13% of the deaths were due to injury, then uh, the total number of deaths times 13% will give you the number of deaths that were due to injury. So we'll do 13% which would be 0 0.13 times 15,024. When I do that and hit enter, you'll notice the calculator gives me a decimal. Now it won't accept a decimal in the actual work. So what I'm gonna do is round normally. So this is 1953.12, so I'm just gonna call it 1953 and delete the 0.12. That's necessary because the calculator expects that x to be a whole number, which makes sense, of course. You can't have a fraction of a death, right? Either the person died or they didn't. There's no in-between. So we're going to round that to a whole number when it comes out to be a decimal. All right, now for the second set of information, we have the x value because it says this many deaths in the U.S. mainland were due to injuries. So we're going to type in 121,599. That's the number of deaths due to injuries. Out of the total number of deaths, 2,423,000. 1,995. So I type all that in my calculator. Now we got to put the claim. Now be careful here. You have to follow it the way we entered the data. Now for X1, we use data for the overseas group, right? X1 and N1 is for the overseas group. So we got to make sure that we put our hypothesis in the proper way. So we're going to be comparing P1 to P2, where P1 for us is going to be the overseas group. Now they say that we want to test the claim that the proportion of deaths of U.S. citizens living in the mainland, that's here in the continental United States, is less than the proportion of injury-related deaths of U.S. citizens abroad. So they're actually saying that our P2, our P2 being the deaths in the mainland, is less than the ones for overseas. So our symbol is actually going to be greater than because of the way we entered the data because we're actually saying our P1 is the overseas group, and this claim is basically saying that the overseas groups have a higher injury-related death, right? Because it's saying the mainland is less. So that means if P2, if the second group of data is our mainland, then it is actually less than P1, which was our overseas. So we have to actually put the symbol in as greater than, because P1 now greater than P2 is how we have it set up. So that's a little bit tricky. You have to be careful. Again, the calculator does a lot of things, but it doesn't think for us. So you have to make sure we enter everything in properly. And finally, we hit enter for the calculate, and it automatically gives us our calculation. So it's really nice here. The hypothesis test produces a very extreme p-value, or z-value, sorry. The z-score here is 44.48, so we clearly would be in the rejection region here. 
And then we have um, the sample p hats in P1 and P2. And all they're telling us there is basically the p hat. See how we used 13%, uh, but because we rounded, they're getting 12.9999. Of course, it's just basically 13%. Then they have the sample proportion for the other group, the mainland. Then they have the pooled estimate of the proportions, and they tell us the ends that were involved in the problem. So it's nice summary data, but the most important thing is they give us the z-score, and then they give us the p-value. Now they're calling the p-value basically zero, and they're saying that because the test stat z is so large. There's such an extreme difference between these two numbers that they're going to go ahead and say that uh, it's you know basically a certainty that we're going to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is zero. So if the p-value is zero, it's going to be less than any normal significance level we use, and we'll reject HO in favor of HA. So in other words, we're supporting this claim. We're saying that it's true that um, people overseas, Americans living overseas, um, die from injury-related deaths far more often as a percentage than the people living in the mainland. And that's it.